We're struggling for that. I will beat one another down, push one another down so we can have our way. If there's no peace, there'll be no righteousness. And God is saying, that does not bring glory unto me. I want to have honor, exaltation, and glory. And the way I can have that glory and exaltation is to have peace among the people of God. The kind of peace that brings the fruit of righteousness. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace and then now we come back to john we're looking at john chapter 15 john chapter 15 and as we look at john chapter 15 i'm reading once again from verse 5 and i want you to notice these words of the lord jesus christ i am the vine ye are the branches he that abideth in me and i in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and the and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burnt. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. He will answer our prayers. While we are abiding in the Lord, he answers our prayers. Herein is my Father glorified. Have you seen that that was the priority of the Lord Jesus Christ? The most important thing in the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I came here not to seek my will, not to glorify myself, and not to speak about myself. I came here to glorify the Lord. And if you have the mind of Christ, if you are a child of God, there will be one thing, one singular thing, solitary thing in your heart. It would be what was in the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He wanted to glorify the Father. And you too, if you're a real child of God, the number one thing you'll want to do is to bring glory unto God. And herein is my Father glorified, that she bear much fruit. And so shall ye be my disciples, glorifying God. God through spiritual fruitfulness. Three points we're going to consider before we pray. Number one, the condition of bearing abundant fruit. The condition. Oh, what does it take? What do we do? Yes, I want to bear fruit, but what do I do? I want to produce fruit. What do I do? You want to be able to have fruit, more fruit, abundant fruit, much fruit in your life to glorify the Father, to please the Father. How does that happen? The condition of bearing abundant fruit. Number two, the consequence of backsliding and abandoned fellowship. The consequence of backsliding and abandoned fellowship. Number three, the compensation for bearing fruit through abiding fellowship. The compensation we have, the reward we have, the resource that come to our lives because we are bearing fruit through abiding in the fellowship of the Son and of the Father. We we'll come to number one. What's number one in your notes? The condition of bearing abundant fruit. Let, let's come back to John chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. You want to bear fruit? That is deserve every child of God. And it says, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, if you remain isolated from Christ, isolated from the Savior, isolated from the one that died for you, that shed his blood for you, you cannot bear fruit. There are some people that try like the Pharisees, like the Sadducees, and they struggle by themselves, by religious activities, religious ceremonies, and religious rites and rules, do's and don'ts. They say, I'll try my best. I will turn over a new leaf. I will not do this. I will not do this. I will not do that. 
there is nothing you can do without salvation. The place was touched while we're able to bear fruit, the fruit of repentance, the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of holiness, the fruit of the Spirit. The way we can bear the fruit is to come to Christ. If you have not been born again, if you are not saved, you may have good intention. And you may have a good desire, and you might say, I want to be as righteous as so and so. I want to be as pure and as so and so. The good intention, the good resolution, the good determination, and the good efforts of making will not amount to anything. That's why Jesus said, As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. That is, you're all by yourself. You don't have the help of the grace of God. You don't have the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb. You don't have the experience of conversion, conversion to the Lord. You do not have the grace of God flowing from Calvary and flowing to your heart, flowing to your heart. You're all alone by yourself. And you cannot bear the fruit of righteousness. It's impossible. No man is righteous. No, not one. If you're going to bear fruit, here is the condition. You come out of sin. And you come out of the world. And come unto Christ. It is that association. That attachment. That conversion. That coming to Christ. That brings you to the Lord. Because as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Except it abides in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. In verse 5, I am, the, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him. He that abideth in me, and I in him. Jesus Christ is actually the fruit producer. It is divine energy within us that bears the fruit. It's not your determination. You know, some people who just come to the church, they're not born again, and they just say, I'll try my best. I'll discipline myself. I'll determine, and I will do this. I will not do this. When Satan comes and he says, do this, I'll say no. I'll just keep to the word of God. No, you cannot. There's no strength in man. The way we put it is they will say an empty bag cannot stand upright. You need to fill that bag with something and then the bag will be able to stand upright without grace, without the love of God, without the salvation of Jesus Christ. All our efforts are in vain because we have the nature of sin and the nature of Satan and the nature of evil and the nature of Adam within us. And that will not allow our determination to work, our resolutions to work. But when you come to Christ to say, Lord, I'm a failure. I cannot do this by myself. I cannot live a righteous life by myself. I come to you and you have said you will not cast me away. Whosoever comes to me, I will not cast away. I come, receive me, Lord. The Lord will receive you. Then he comes into you and now because he abides in you. That is the secret of bearing fruit. He abides in you. It's divine energy within you. It's grace within you. It's help within you. It's support, sustaining strength within you. It's what helps you to bear the fruit. I am the vine in verse 5, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, tell me the rest, ye can do nothing. The most determined man without Christ, you can do nothing. And the most moral man, the one that says, I know the morals, I know the Ten Commandments, I know what you do. Without salvation in Christ, you can do nothing. But I hate sin, I hate corruption, I hate every evil thing. And I'm determined that that hatred, I'll carry it out. I will not do evil. No, without Christ, the most determined man, the most determined woman that hates evil and hates sin, you can do nothing, come to Christ. The very condition of bearing fruit is to come to him. Let's look at someone. Someone, I'm reading from verse 3, the secret of bearing abundant fruit unto the Lord. The condition of bearing the fruit in someone, verse 1, blessed is the man. 
that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the of discomfort. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law does he meditate day and night. It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water like a tree planted when you become the planting of the lord and the lord plants you you remember every plant the father has not planted will be rooted out the lord must take you and plant you in the vine plant you in the kingdom and it is the planting of the lord that actually brings the fruit of righteousness and the fruit of the spirit and the fruit of holiness and the fruit of peace in your life it says and he shall be like the tree like a tree planted by the rivers of water and that bringeth forth his fruit in a season and his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth tell me shall prosper psalm 92 in psalm 92 again we were talking about being planted by the lord yeah, there are some of these people religious people they think by religious determination religious resolution i've been in the church for a long time i should be able to do what they are telling us to do we need grace to do that, you know. We need the strength of God to live a righteous life. It's not just resolution and determination. Determination will fail you. Resolution will disappoint you. It is righteous and redemption in Christ. You come to Christ and then he continues to supply the grace. The grace to live in righteousness. Psalm 92. I'm reading there from verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted. The planting is very important. The Lord takes you out of where you are. Out of uh, where you are being in sin. And then it uproots you out of there. And now he plants you in the kingdom. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. I pray you will flourish. A plant source in the house of the Lord shall flourish like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth what? When? In old age. And you know, some people get older, they become more bitter. They look at everything around them and they say, why has this happened? Why has that happened to me? The older they get, the more bitter they are. They are angry at everybody. As if everybody should, you know, be prostrating before them and doing, they think they deserve the marriage. I married this, I married that. And if they don't have what they think they married, the older they get, they are so bitter, they are so angry. But it says if you are planted in the house of the Lord and the grace of God is in you and the love of God is there. If you are planted, look at a man and look at a woman. That, you know, you cannot live with them when they get old. You cannot stay around them when they get old. Because they, they just criticize everything and everybody around them. And it appears there's no fruit anymore of righteousness. And then you look at them, you say, I knew this uh, man when he was much younger. He appreciated people, appreciated things around him. He appreciated the kingdom of God, appreciated the children of God. And you could see the beautiful fruits of righteousness and holiness. How has this old man become like this? Maybe he's not reading the Bible anymore. And maybe he's not praying anymore. Maybe he's not, no more planted. He has been uprooted from where he was. But it says when you are planted in the house of the Lord, they shall still be bringing forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. I pray you continue to flourish in Jesus' name. The condition and the reason why we bring forth fruit. We're looking at John chapter 12 verse 24. John chapter 12. You're wondering, you're bearing fruit already. And you're saying, how can I bear more fruit? How can I have the fruit of righteousness and the fruit of repentance? The fruit of holiness and the fruit of the spirit in my life. Here is it, here is it in John chapter 12, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and uh, die. 
it abides alone uh, you know self wants to raise up its ugly head in your life and self wants to be the center of concentration everybody focusing on self everybody worshiping that self everybody coming to that self everybody petting that self but it says while self is there the self-centered life everything thinking about yourself everybody must be hovering around you and doing only the thing that pleases you it says while self is there you'll be staying alone there'll be no fruit just like the corn of wheat that abides alone and will not fall into the ground and die it is falling to the ground and dying dying to self self-interest self-exaltation self-praise it is when you die to that you'll be able to bring forth fruit that means you're not thinking about yourself anymore you wake up in the morning not what can i get today what can i give out today you wake up in the morning not what can i have today what can i do to help other people today you wake up in the morning what can i do to please other people today what not what can people do to please me today not how can i increase my joy today how can i bring joy and happiness to the lives of other people today you wake up in the morning how, what how can i live that people will glorify me and exalt me and honor me and promote me to know that is self what can I do today that will bring glory to God and will bring a exaltation to God that I will turn the minds and the hearts of people to God today? When that is your focus, you'll bring forth fruit because you are asking the right question. Look at that verse 24. Chapter 12, verse 24. Verily, verily. That means certainly, certainly. It means this is something very sure. An unchangeable axiom, an unchangeable principle. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a kind of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. That's the condition of fruit bearing. The condition of bearing much fruit. That you die to sell. That you stop thinking of this is what i want this is what i must have this is what i deserve this is what people must do for me or give to me die to that and you'll bring forth fruit in romans chapter 6 again i'm reading from verse 22 romans chapter 6 verse 22 but now be made free from sin that means the hand of the Lord has touched you and the grace of God has come to you. And the grace of God comes to make you free, free from sin. Then it says after that freedom and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Romans chapter 7 verse 4. Romans chapter 7 verse 4. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also have become dead to the law by the body of Christ that ye should be married to another. When you consider your relationship with Christ as marriage unbroken and that you are forever permanently a kind of associated to the Lord, connected with the Lord, and you count that as mine, you say nothing will hinder this. And anywhere you go, you say I'm married to Christ, because you are married to Christ, you'll not do anything that will not please him. That union, that fellowship, that attachment, that marriage unto the Lord will produce fruit. It says you are married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. It is that that brings the fruit. 